It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Scentlock Technologies, Scent Blocker, Rambo Bikes, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Limwalker Game Calls, Stanislavski Releases, Copper John Sights, Easy Cut Outdoor Products, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Hunting Sense, X Stand Tree Stands, Spot Shooters, Gut Check Indicators, and Packer Mets Cult Packers. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on GoodTalkRadio.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal. Sitting here in the cabin this Thursday night. But actually, Danny, we're recording this for Easter Sunday. Yes, because we are at home with our families. That's right. So, uh, as we said last week, that uh, this show is going to be pre-recorded. But uh, before we get started real quick, we want to give a quick shout out to Hunter's Blend Coffee. Even on always. a Thursday, That's we're, right. we're, we're drinking our Hunter's Blend. Yeah, and I've misplaced my cup, so I've got a different cup here tonight, but Hunter's Blend is in the cup. And remember, get over to huntersblendcoffee.com. Remember to use uh, the promo code capital UNJ when you're checking out. You'll get an extra 10% off there. Well, I'll tell you what, Dan, let's just jump right into this. We've got a special guest with us tonight, uh, none other than... Tread Barda himself, Tread Barda from the the best and worst of Tread Barda on NBC Sports from years back. Uh, Tread, how you doing? I'm doing fine, and it wasn't too far back. Not years t- back, a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, that's right. Yeah, it wasn't. I I lose track of time so so quickly anymore. I got a couple grandkids, and I'm chasing them around, and they keep me busy. But uh, welcome to the Up North Journal podcast and our live stream tonight, man. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to sit down and talk with us. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to. You know, I never uh, give a talk to anyone in the world uh, without saying the Pledge of Allegiance and a prayer. But tonight, I think we'll just say God bless America and uh, God bless the show. There's nothing like the North Country and the North Country Journal. Got a nice ring to it. It's the the soul of hunting and fishing, and I like it. Amen to that. I I appreciate it. Amen. And honestly, we could all use a little blessing along the way. That's uh, definitely a fact. But uh, you know, also, uh, also kudos for uh, not doing it this Sunday on Easter Sunday, uh, the birth of Jesus. So I think that uh, uh, good going on that. I like that. You know, that, that's something uh, Mike and I uh, pretty much every holiday we're we're not in the cabin doing work if it falls on a Sunday. So uh, we'd rather be with family and making memories that way and good memories. Absolutely. Yep. So there's there's other places to be on the holidays and uh, on on uh, especially. Our, our spiritual holidays and spending time with family and friends and, and getting out there and doing what we need to be doing with them as well. So, but, uh, you know, for those of you who you've heard the name Tread Bardo, I mean, we've seen the shows before on TV. Tread, what, what have you, what have you been up to lately? Well, it's, it's been a long road. Um, during the last year of my TV show, um, I was headed up to Alaska, um, on the inside passage, uh, was leaving in the morning uh, to do a black bear a stalking with my longbow, homemade wooden arrows and uh, stone points. Uh, I've taken over 100 animals that way, including a grizzly at eight yards that was on TV. My right foot um, felt asleep. But it's like kind of when you go, when you wake up and your elbow is asleep in bed, that's the way it felt. And my wife and I at that time, um, I'm divorced now, unfortunately. Uh, of which about 85% of all paraplegics are, uh, went for a beautiful ride on, on my horse Badger, came back. I had excruciating um, pain in my bowels, moving forward quickly a week um, of shots and x-rays and uh, all kinds of tests. Um, I drove to the hospital. The pain was so intense that I stopped on I-70, uh, 75 miles an hour, major, major uh, throughway. I put it in park, passed out, ended up in the arms of a policeman who, if he had broke, if he had not broken protocol, meaning that he had not picked me up in his arms, which he was not authorized to do. He drove me to the hospital, which he was not authorized to do. He didn't call the ambulance because he noticed the problem and used common sense. You remember that common sense? We all used to live on that basis. Yeah, that's yeah. Kind, of, we're kind of losing that one. Yeah. Just took a, a sip of my coffee and I want to be a sponsor of that at Hunter's Coffee, um, took me to the hospital and right in front of my eyes, 
both my uh, left leg and my right leg completely went away. No feeling. Uh, as I remember, it was a helicopter to Vail, uh, Denver, uh, uh, a hospital uh, at the Swedish Center. And I stayed there for almost five months, wherein I died. Uh, they gave me three days to live on three different occasions. Three days. Three days on three five days, different occasions. Everybody. You know, and, and this sounds to me like you said it started with your, your foot falling asleep, and then it went to excruciating yep. pain. Yep. You must have been, I mean, as this is going on, and you, like you said, fast forward a week here and there, and it's like you, your mind must have been just racing. You know, everybody listening, I'd, I'd like to say one thing to you. Uh, it's very easy to talk about life and death situation, but you are listening to a man whose entire world left him while he's watching and ended up just below my elbows or below my nipples. My, my paralysis is just below my nipples on my chest. And if I fall out of my chair, I cannot get back in. But you're talking to a man who has completely blown through that. But let me just quickly go forward. During that time, I trained uh, how to live in a wheelchair. And just, bef- uh, just before uh, I came back to the ranch, they gave me three days to live. I ripped all the IVs out of me. I was totally incontinent, meaning that I pooped and peed. I, I, I could not control my bowels. It was disgusting. It was demoralizing. It is the worst. You can't go out, can't do this. You wake up and your bed is soiled. I mean, I'm not embarrassed by telling you this because this is what happened. I went to the barn. I prayed to my Lord. I couldn't take it anymore, and I was going to take my life. And uh, I put a 45 Glock ACP to my head. I had pressure on the trigger. The barn door opened, and in walked my oncologist, who was a dear friend. And he said, Fred, I need to do one more chemo or one more uh, type of uh, situation. And I I, want to beg you, please don't take your life. This is a cool cat now. This is a a tax forward military expert uh, as a doctor. Cool hand loop times pie. So I looked at my face. He walked up to me. He didn't try to take the gun away from me. He didn't try to talk me out of not taking my life. He said, Fred, I want your word that you will not take your life and that you'll give me a shot. I said to him, how do you know I'm not going to do it? He said, Fred, you just gave me your word that you're not. I know you're not. Everybody, that's how I've lived my life. And that moment today, out of all the things I've done, been around the world three times, circumvented the globe, hunted and fished everywhere, that moment was the greatest time in my life because I realized at that moment that even looking at death eminently in seconds, that Tread Barda's word was his bond, and it was his word and bond to other people. I say that to everybody listening, because if, if you're having money problems like we all have, and tax problems like we all have at times, and marriage problems, and, and kid problems, and all the problems of life, the greatest two things was the belief in your Lord and your word. So to move it on real quick, I prayed, I cried. I was in the worst shape of my life. I felt terrible. I had lost terrible weight. Uh, I was paralyzed. Uh, And he brought me into the hospital, and he gave me um, a treatment for this rare, rare, rare blood cancer called Waldenstrom's, which is a thickening of the blood, which, which blew up my spine. And in front of our eyes, 15 different graphs went straight up like a meteor, like the flight of a phoenix. And this particular uh, injection ate away at the Waldenstrom's, and I was coming like a fireball. Two months later, I'm on my court shooting a 65-foot, a 65-pound longbow representing Three Rivers Archery and doing 20 episodes, the last episodes of the best and worst of Tread Barda, in my wheelchair. So what's my point, everybody? The belief in the Lord the value of your word, the integrity of the way you lived your life is more important than anything. And don't anybody, I beg you, anybody, ever forget the value of integrity, honesty, and code. Semper Fi, don't ever forget it. And today I'm sitting in my wheelchair and I'm healthy and uh, I am the oldest living person in the world 
with my this type of blood cancer. And guess what? My life expectancy is zero. And I expect to live for another 20 years. Wow. I... Now, I want to let everybody else to hear one other thing. I mentioned the word common sense and how we don't have it today. A particular doctor at a particular hospital in a particular place at a particular time whose name and place and hospital I will not mention was not allowed uh, sip of coffee. Good. <laughs> was not allowed to do a colostomy, which is a bag on your on your belly, mm-hmm. wherein your waste products go into a bag and you can change it, and a super pubic wherein a tube goes into the above your penis, mm-hmm. into your belly, into your bowel, so the urine can collect in a, a, a bag. Those two things were my savior. Those two things changed my life. Now, am I happy? Am I embarrassed? No, I'm not. Do I like talking about this as a gentleman with kids and women and people listening? I'm not happy, but I am not embarrassed because I do it in a civil and polite way. That doctor took me into a hospital at 3 o'clock in the morning doing a double operation of a colostomy and a suprapubic with six people, both done at the same time, to get me out of the hospital before everybody came in. And as a result of that, I did not take my life. So today, the whole bathroom thing is a piece of cake. So I'd like to give you two incidences of people not following the exact rules, breaking protocol, using common sense, saved my life. And by the way, this life has raised $2 million for underprivileged kids and a million dollars for underprivileged kids of the Boys and Girls Club in Beaufort, North Carolina, 28 scholarships after I've had my cancer. So don't tell me ever, don't ever listen to anybody who says that God does not love us because God loves every single one of us. And all you have to do is believe in him. All you have to do is humble yourself before him and understand that you are one of his sheep and that he gives you grace and that you have a belief and that you wear the armor of God and you can do anything. And today with so an- so much anti-Christian stuff everywhere, I wear my cross on my sleeve and I'm proud of it. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I listen to the show and your show and people. And you know what? I know all the people in the upper, pe- upper pe- in the peninsula that I know and all through Michigan and the Midwest and where you guys go, we believe the same thing. So uh, I don't know what you call a segment, but that's my thoughts on what <laughs> happened to me. And right now, the only thing I don't have is that coffee you're pitching because I'm <laughs> drinking something else. Well, I, when you come when you come up to get that trailer, if we cross paths, we got to get you some of this because I tell you what, uh, you know, talking about giving back, uh, this this company is a Christian company and uh, they give back. Uh, there's there's a lot long story behind Hunter's Blend Coffee. So if you get a chance, ever check it out their website. Their story's on there. It's uh, it's awesome. I'd like I'd like to. But I I tell you but, what. You, you know, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to let everybody know on on this uh, segment here is that there's nothing that I cannot do that I used to do without help. I am not crippled. I am not paralyzed. I I am not all kind of things. What I am is I am. And when you accept the Lord in your life, you accept that everything happens for a reason. Sometimes you don't like what happens, but when one door closes, another opens. And Absolutely. isn't that the way life is? Absolutely. And today, I don't shoot a 65, 75-pound longbow because I have no stomach muscles, and there's a lot of problems with my shoulders that I've worn out. But guess what? Coming up, I had an encounter in the UP with my crossbow that I would love to talk about. Absolutely. I, you know, and, and I tell you what, that, uh, that might be a good place to take a break right now. Um, you know, one thing you said before we go to break, I, I want to mention is when you talk about your, your word is your bond. My great grandfather always told us kids that, you know, your word is your bond. There's nothing stronger than your word, the, you know, your word to another man. And, you know, when you said that, man, it just it brought chills back to me, me thinking of what my grandfather taught me. So uh, yeah. kudos you know to what? you. In, in, in ending this segment, if you ever break your word or you do something which is wrong, lower yourself in front of the Lord, apologize to the person you offended, pray on it yourself, and move forward. And yeah. life will be okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. All right, I tell you what, we're going to step outside. We're going to take our first break. We come back. We're going to continue our conversation here with Tread Barton. We'll be right back after this. 
PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. We're still sitting here talking to Tread Barta, uh, who has a, a incredible story. Um, you know, and, and before we, we go on, I, I'm not going to mention any names, but I, I've got a, a, a friend out there that I used to shoot archery with. And uh, I, I hope you're watching because I've sent a message to you um, who, who's got, had some problems. And Tread, uh, you know, I, I hope that this, this segment will speak to him about digging yourself out uh, and what you've called digging yourself out. When, when, when you get to that point, like you said, you, you were ready to take your own life and, and you didn't, I mean, and you talked about what stopped you at that point, but, but beyond that, you, you had to come to where you're at today. How did you transition from that point to where you're at now? Well, you know, it's funny. Um, most people don't like to hear this and they consider it rude and uh, uh, obtuse, but, there are winners in life and there are losers in life. Mm-hmm. There are people who try hard. There are people who are lazy. There are people who accomplish something for themselves and others. And there are people who take. It's unfortunate part of life. Uh, just as if you were talking about nature and every single thing that's bigger than something else eats the other thing. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's what we call life. But the net is you can hurry up living or you can hurry up dying. And I say to people all the time, people are absolutely horrid when I say it. They were, oh, Tred, how can you say that? I say to people, hey, you want to sit on the couch, drink beer, get fat, don't do anything, feel sorry for yourself, uh, be rude to everybody, oh, boo-hoo-hoo me, don't kill yourself, get out of here, goodbye. But if you want to hurry up living, then live. And I, I truly believe that every single human being is born with the inalienable right of life and survival. That's what makes us so great. And that's what we see in the natural world all the time. And you've got to dig. There's nothing that you can't do, but you have to learn to ask for help. I've been a leader my whole life. I've been always the guy who was captain of this or captain of that or leader of this. The things that I've accomplished in my life, the 33 world records in hunting and fishing, the things that I've done, uh, in my life, including breaking one of the world records of Fred Bears in 1952 of a a warthog in in Africa with the longbow. These things can be done by you, but you have to learn how to ask for help. If you think about somebody in a parking lot who is miserable, whose clothes are dirty, who's in a wheelchair, who's unkept, who's not clean, you don't want to help that person. But if you take somebody in a wheelchair who takes care of himself, is polite, is articulate, who's asking for help, who wants help, and is showing you that that, that he can do anything and is trying, most people will bend over backwards to help you. The United States of America is the greatest place in the world to live. In fact, all you have to do is come halfway and 1%. That's all you have to do. So, can't shoot the boat. Okay? Well... What about a tripod and shooting the crossbow? Mm -hmm. Can't fly fish. What about putting bands around your chest and pulling yourself back into the wheelchair, giving yourself stomach muscles so you can fly fish? What about scuba diving? Coming up with a special patch that goes over your colostomy opening in your stomach so that you can go scuba diving. I can't think of anything. I'm getting ready to jump out of an airplane in a special harness that they're designing. Uh, I need my leg as a pilot, I'm a 7,500-hour pilot, 22 ocean crossings. I'm an uh, amphibious pilot. I'm a bush plane pilot. I'm rated in jets and turboprops. I don't have use of my legs. How can I fly? Well, guess what? There's ultralight airplanes that don't have rudders. And there's a couple of types of airplanes that were developed that, you don't, that, that, that the rudders are tied into the aileron tie rods so you don't have to use your feet. There's what, what is it that I can't do? Okay, I can play football. Ain't going to last very long. 
<laughs> but you can put all the you can put all the stuff on me, and you can throw me the ball, and I can just sit there, come and get me. But I I can get on that field, and and I'm just serious. You, you want is the willing to want to live, and that that to me comes from the Lord. It also comes from other people and the love and camaraderie that they give you. But you must take that step. And to all of you who are on the couch, who ate too much, who aren't washing their clothes, who are in a slump, who are depressed, who feel sorry for themselves, let me all tell you that I was there also. I cried like a baby for hours. Boo, hoo, hoo. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. My world is over. Why did this happen to me? I know it all. I know all the excuses. You look at our Wounded Warrior program. You look at people coming back from battle who, who offered their lives up and their limbs up and arms and legs. You look at these people who, who, who defended the right of the, of the United States to be great and to be a democracy and to be free. These people are getting back on their feet every single day. You need to find the power within to go forward. And what is it? What is that thing that you love to do? I mean, I don't care if it was playing the piccolo. I don't care if it was Parcheesi. I don't even know what Parcheesi is. I don't know if anybody knows what Parcheesi is. <laughs> what is Parcheesi? I, always, I, I have no was, idea. Uh, <laughs> I thought Parcheesi was a bread with a Parmesan heated on it. But in any event, I don't care what you want to do. If that brought you happiness, in some form, you can do it. And uh, I love to hunt. And I love to fish. And I love the great outdoors. And I love nature. You know? You can catch the largest blue marlin in the entire world. You can see it hook up. You can see it eat a double hooked mackerel. You can see it go airborne all over the place. You can go to the UP and shoot a 220 point monster, 380 pound white tail. But if you don't have somebody to share it with, it's like it never happened. Mm -hmm. And the meaning of this to everyone on the couch is if I can do it, you can do it. Find the person that you share most with and share your life and get back in the game. Now, you're coming to someone. I come to you humbled as I do before the Lord. I wake up every morning. I read my Bible for 15 minutes, 15 minutes only. I pray to him for five minutes and I go about my business. If you can get back on the things that you love and share it with other people, you can get off that couch. You're talking to a man who admits that I had a 45 ACP to my head with the, figure, with the trigger halfway depressed. And anyone who shoots a Glock knows that they can take their personal pistol and they know exactly where they can pull that trigger until that gun goes off. So when you talk, I'm not talking down to anybody who's on the couch, but damn it, I want to live. And I'm going to live my life big and bold. And I'm going to share and I'm going to give because I believe that that is why I was put in the position that I'm in. And uh, I'll just say, if this is not encouraging to you, then maybe you ought to just check out. Because you can do it, I do. If I can do it, you can do it. And uh, my message to everybody listening who is not afflicted, and listen very carefully. I'm asking all of you to listen so carefully now. Matter of fact, I beg you. As a person who always helped other people, who always had time for people, always had money to help other people. You will never, ever, 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 ever understand how much it means to somebody when you help them. I never thought, I just, I saw someone in need, I helped them. But now that I'm paralyzed from my chest down and I'm a paraplegic T4 Asia A, when somebody helps me, the kindness is so great that sometimes I just burst out in tears. So never miss the opportunity to help somebody else. I mean, are we all so busy that you know, I was at a bit busy intersection the other day in Raleigh, North Carolina, and the cars were going, you know, four way intersection. You got it. Light. This turn right. That one turns left. And this goes and I, about like a 20 minute intersection. And there is a woman hunched over in her 90s trying to take her cart over a pretty bad curb. And she couldn't do it on a red light. I took my truck. I parked it sideways in the middle of the intersection. Everybody's honking and raising their hands and this and that and giving me the proverbial finger. I open the side of my truck, which is a special truck. I'm in my wheelchair when I drive, hand controls. I rolled across 
to help this woman. And no less than 20 people got out of their cars. That intersection was shut down because at that moment, people understood how how busy is my life that I don't have a moment to help an 80-year-old woman. Right on. And tears were coming out of people's eyes. And a policeman stopped. And he came up to me and says, what's going on here? And I said, sir, the woman needs help. And he shut the whole intersection down. So I'm not saying that people should do this. And I do a lot of things that defy common sense the way we live. <laughs> but, but it's okay because never miss the opportunity to help someone else. We have to lead ourselves, but we also have to those lead those who are in need. And those who are better in the Bible um, than me. I'm having a little brain fart here, but in the Bible, when the when all of the people and the tax collectors were were talking to Jesus, and and Jesus uh, went to a woman who was a prostitute and brought her up and said to everybody, you know, those those uh, those who are perfect cast the first stone. The Lord has always praised and shown grace to the weak and those who need help. So let's help them. Do I sound like I'm a person? Who is in a wheelchair? No, no who's not ever at all. Rock? Not now, at let me all. tell you something, everybody. When I woke up this morning, you know what I saw? Go ahead, in a segment. Ask me what I saw. What did you see? Go ahead. What did you see, Tread? I saw 185 pounds of blue twisted steel powered by Jet A, a touch of nitrous rolling sex machine. That's what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> so get off the couch, change your attitude, grab life, and move forward. I tell you what, and you, that is, that's my message. You know what, Tread? You said uh, a little bit earlier in the segment that uh, if, if if this doesn't inspire you, you know, maybe you should check out. What I suggest is maybe you should go back to the beginning of the show and yeah. listen to it again, yeah, and again, and again, and again, until you get it, until you get it. Because if you don't yeah. end up getting it by segment two here, you're you're, you're missing something. Yeah. So so go back to the beginning and start again yeah. until you get it right, and then tell us. Because look at you, look at you. You stopped traffic for a ninety year old woman who needed help, and it took you in a wheelchair to get twenty other people to stop to get off their butts to get off their butts. You know, I, I think everybody's got a purpose. I I don't care who you are. I, everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a reason for being here. Sometimes it takes a while to find it. Um, everybody knows what I've been through here. We've talked about it on the show before, and I'm not feeling sorry for myself, and I'm not even going to bring up any further. But the point is, you get through it. I was at a place where I felt sorry for myself. You move, you you pick yourself up, and tread. I mean, I there's nothing I can say except hats off, man. I mean, you're an inspiration. That's well, all I can say. This is not this is not about me. No, um, I understand that, but me, me is long long time ago. But you know, in the upper P. And in places all through the North Country and Michigan and Minnesota and all over the place, you know, you see a guy with a four point one or two year old small white tail, and he obviously has got the head over the over the uh, the back of the truck so everybody can see. Mm-hmm. Here's a man who shot a trophy to him. How dare you look down on that deer and call it a runt or whatever people do? I mean, the biggest, greatest, most wonderful deer ever shot in the history of mankind is a 12-year-old boy who harvests his first doe with his grandfather in in, in Michigan on a a little foggy day and just a perfect day. A doe. Yep. Amen to that. Amen to that. I hear on TV, that's a runt, and this is a runt, and everybody's naming deer, and on the hit list and this and that and this is big and that you know give me a break everybody i mean you know uh, the the size of a man's heart is not measured by the size of an animal's antlers that's a fact yep i've never heard it put that way but you know what that that hits home for a lot of people right there sure does yeah do you guys um um you guys go ahead and uh, what states do you guys cover uh, we're across the whole United States, and people leaving overseas listen to the show. Tread. So if you guys, we, we go all the way to Australia. Yeah. yeah. So. Wow, that's great. Good you know, for you guys. It's uh, yeah. you know, we we've been blessed. Uh, we've got some great people out there that support us, and uh, you know, we've always said that you know the the trophy's in the eye of the person who took it. You know, I've I've been fortunate enough to be with with all four of my kids when they took their their first deer. 
And, um, you know, my next, next thing I want to do is be with my grandkids when they take their first deer and buck doe wow. no, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, I mean, it's taking care of the resource. It's, it's memories and yep. it's, it's, it's to the individual. Yep, exactly. But I think we should, we should talk about the UP buck in the next segment. All right. Well, Tread, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and take a break. We come back. I showed a few pictures of that buck, but I want to hear the story behind this. Since we're from Michigan, I can't wait. <laughs> so I tell you, to tell it. all right. Well, I tell you what, we're going to step outside. We're going to go ahead and we we'll take our next break. We we'll come back. Tred's going to take us on a trip to the UP, and Danny hunts up there, so I know he's going to be able to relate, and a lot of people are going to be able to relate to this story. So we'll be right back after this. PSC archery has always dominated the speed category. Now. The most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back. Third segment of the show. We talked a little bit about where Tread was at, where he's come through, how he got to where he's at today. But uh, Tread, uh, if I'm not speaking wrongly here, you took a buck in Michigan. Was it last last year or 2008? Yeah, 2018 or 2017? I don't know. Can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Life goes so fast. It, it feels like yesterday. Okay. Uh, All right. I think, I, I think it was last year. I thought it was last it was year. Last, okay. It was last fall. Okay. Early fall. Well, take us on know, the hunt. I get a, uh, I get an email from a gentleman by the name of Eric Davis, and uh, he's out of Clio. I think it's C L I O. Yep, Clio, Michigan. Clio, yep. Clio, Michigan. And he says, Fred, I'd love to take you hunting. Everybody up here watches your show. Blah 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 blah. But he's a nice guy, and he's full of energy, and he keeps asking me and asking me and asking me, and I, I keep saying, you know, I'd love to come, but I got to work it in. Well, before I know it, I'm driving to Clio, and um, everywhere I go, I always try to give back to the community. Uh, it's just something in my upbringing, you know, it's just driven to do that. And uh, Eric, uh, the, Eric's brother is Greg. Greg uh, loves to shoot um, woodcock. Eric is a, a, a fanatic, I mean, ridiculous fanatic on managing his property in the uh, UP. And... Um, there's too many Eric's. The, the, the Eric Cloyder is the uh, minister of the Messiah Lutheran Church. So I decide that I'm asking them if I can. They have a big game dinner planned, mm -hmm. and they asked me if I could give a talk, and which I did to a, a packed uh, stadium or auditorium. It was it was wonderful. Great big game dinner, and all of us know um, being in the North Country, kind of. It's not called the South Country Journal. It's called the North Country Journal. Mm -hmm the type of people, such great people are in the Midwest. And I just, I felt really comfortable. Had a great time. Uh, I got to prepare uh, the meat with a local restaurant there. And after a couple of days of that and a very successful talk, we head up to a place called Blaney Park. And um, I've been around the world, everybody, three times. Now, I didn't get an airplane and fly around the world. I hunt and fish in the best places all around the world. Costa Rica, Panama, no matter where it is, all through Europe. The best places, the best times. I had a TV show for 10 years. I, I've done it. And the UP is a pretty place. It is not the Swiss Alps. It is not the Mackenzie Mount. It is not the Yukon or British Columbia or Alaska. It never will be. It's very beautiful, but it's not those places. But there's something that draws me to that country. And it's bothered me a little bit because it only can be one thing. It has to be the people and camaraderie of these guys. They bought, believe it or not, the, uh, Eric and Greg, they bought an old hotel with like seven rooms, you know, and it's their hunting lodge and they've got a, a, a great room and then these little seven rooms and they all care about each other. They all cook together. They all chip in. They all maintain the stuff together. They build the blinds together. But, you know, I stopped at the first gas station as you come over the what, what's the first monster bridge you go over? Oh, the, 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 the Ma Mackinac Bridge. Mackinac Bridge. Yeah, back in Albridge, yep. Uh, pardon, pardon me, but I've only been to the UP once, guys, so uh, I'm not a local. That's all right. Um, you get on the other side of the bridge, and there's a gas station. And you pull the gas station, and bigger than the uh, the pumps 
are beef and corn and this and that and welcome hunters. And I mean, everywhere you go, they're selling feed and stands and oh God, what a great place. So I, I went at the beginning of bow season. We, I went with my uh, girlfriend at that time, Sandy. And by the way, I love Sandy so much. Uh, and she says that she loves me. Her name is Sandy Thornton. Um, I asked her to marry me and she said no. And there are things in our relationship that aren't going to work as a husband and a wife, but we are going to work as friends for life. And I could call her now and she would come if I had an emergency and the same thing. So anyway, my dear friend Sandy and I went on this hunt and um, Sandy shoots the longbow also. She also had a license and we get to camp. Everything is going great. And their brothers, I want everybody to listen to this, Eric and the two Eric's, uh, no, excuse me, Greg Davis and, and, and um, Eric Cloyder, so the minister of the church, and um, Greg, who's Eric's brother, both Davises, they go woodcock hunting every single morning, up at, you know, zero dark hundred and go woodcock hunting. Everybody, they put up 20 to 50 woodcock every single morning. Wow. 20 to 50. I mean, it's incredible. Some of the best woodcock hunting I've ever heard of in my life. And Greg Davis is one of these guys. Everybody knows somebody like this. Nicest guy in the world. Mixed dominant. Shoots with the left hand. Uses the right eye. He closed the right eye. Shoots with the left hand. I mean, just absolutely screwed up. He just, <laughs> as, hard as, he, as hard as he tries, he, he couldn't hit the barn. And he's so honest about it. But it's just. Just the way it is, uh. but he won't quit. And as the days go by, one day, two day, three day, five day, oh my God, he's had like 60 shots and hasn't killed one. <laughs> and finally on the last day, he shoots the, well, he shoots the most possible double that they're telling me about. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the other hunting partner was floored. And he was so happy and to see that joy in camp and to see everybody toast him and oh it's, you know it's just what hunting camp is all about Amen. but let's get back to my gear <laughs> so i'm using the crossbow i shoot a uh, uh a recurve um bow called the something it's made in it's made in uh, canada yeah, i'm sorry yeah. made in canada yeah um anyway i use excalibur i shoot an excalibur crossbow the something 55 it's a uh, it, it shoots at 255 feet per second and it is a crossbow, and it has a crank in the back that I can put on. So listen, everybody. I'm paralyzed from my chest down. I can't lift a lot, but I get that crossbow, and I put it on a hook on my where my feet go on my chair. And then I take the hand crank, and I can crank it. I can load it. I can shoot it, and I can hunt with it. Everybody on the couch, you hear that? <laughs> you hear right it? On. That's right. Everybody, I am in the game, baby. And I got a 3 to 9 scope on it. And I can shoot, uh, personally, um, I can shoot out to about 50 yards pretty well. Some people I see on TV can shoot to 100. 50 is far enough for me. Um, and I don't like shooting out that far. Uh, but I'm really good, guys. Really good. I mean really good from zero to 30 yards. And I'm talking about maybe a four-inch group, which is, to me, That's kill zone. Is, yeah. <laughs> kill zone times 20. Yep. So we have a, a, a blind that has been built into the side of the hill, and my wheelchair is absolutely perfect with the ledge. It takes five of the guys to get me in. Uh, Sandy and I get in here. Um, we are using sweet potatoes, and we're in there into the blind. Everything went well. You all know the excitement. You can imagine ever how excited you are. I'm 50 times as excited. This is the first crossbow I've ever owned. This is the first uh hunt with the crossbow i've gone on it's the first time to the, up to the up i'm getting along with everybody i gave a talk in church i did i just happened the lord blessed me i did a great job i mean i feel part of this family i'm in hunting camp the woman i love is right next to me we the deer they cannot see me baby this is a stealthy blind i mean it ought to be illegal <laughs> I mean, it's built into the side of the hill. It's dark behind me. Nobody knows that I'm there. It, it, it's just so perfect. We've got no problem with scent, and I'm taking it all in. It's just beautiful. And a doe comes in, and this doe is must weigh 
at the most 45 pounds, maybe 50 pounds. And she's trying to pick up one of these, uh, I keep calling them sweet potatoes. They're not sugar they're beets. Sweet beets, right? Sugar, sugar beets. Sugar beets, I'm yeah. sorry. They pick up one of these sugar beets, and she can just about get her mouth on it and it falls out. And she tries to pick it up and take it away from the pile. And she, so what we watch her for 10 minutes, we're laughing and cracking up. And everybody is always talking about the big deer of last year and the big deer about the year before. Um, and they got pictures of the deer and mounts of the deer. And, and of course, I'm just just so happy. I, I have a, a special license for paraplegic people in the state of Michigan. I forget what it was. But I, I think I had a choice of taking I could take five deer total, and the first two had to be two bucks. And it had to be of a certain size and ever what the rules are. Um, I only was going to shoot one deer because that's all I needed to bring home with me. I drove up in my pickup truck, by the way. Uh, I So... Just um, about an hour, I look off to the side of the blind, and here's a little tine of the rack of a nice buck. And all of a sudden, a doe blows hard, and the buck leaves. I see him turn out. Got an hour of honest shooting left. We hear then wolves. And I don't know how many guys have been up to UP lately, but the wolves are terrible. They're, they are decimating and hurting the deer fleet. That's what everybody tells me. True statement. I, I'm not an expert. Up there. I'm not an expert up there. But when I go to a gas station and I go to somewhere else, and these guys and everybody I talk to in, in, is talking about the wolves, there's a wolf problem. So I hear them. I don't need to discuss the lonely call of a wolf. I guess it's one of the most beautiful things that you can hear in the North Country, and one of the, it's something that sends a chill up your spine. <laughs> in walk this buck and the buck appears to me to be an eight pointer he appears to have nice mass he appears to be about 200 pounds and i get the sweats my throat is dry hey everybody this is a man who's hunted all around the world i've taken the big five with the bow you know believe me these things are happening to me getting a little buck fever (laughs) all, all your couch people listen to me real quick couch people people feeling sorry for yourself you know why this is happening to me? Because I am reborn, not only in the Lord, but I'm reborn from my attitude that if I can do it, you can do it, and that I can do anything. I'm paralyzed from my chest down. It's like being a reborn child. You know, here I am, the man who is going to die in three days, and I'm hunting white tail deer with a crossbow that I loaded, a bolt that I made, a scope that I sighted in, in a blind that, that I got to with a lot of help, and I'm hunting. And... I'm about to maybe get a shot at a six-point UP buck. Well, the buck, oops, got to take a sip of coffee. The buck stops before the, the pile of feed. We have, we have a little clearing in front of this line. Um, I use the range finder. It's at 33 yards. And um, I put the pin right where it should go. Sandy is right next to me. And I'm always training Sandy. Sandy never looks at the buck. Never look at his eyes. Lower your eyes. When you're ready to shoot, shoot. But never make eye contact. Oh, dear. Bless her heart. I mean, we weren't, nobody could see us in the blind. So Sandy puts her head in the corner of the blind and closes her eyes. <laughs> 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 you know, I didn't know it, but, you know, that she's in the corner being quiet with her eyes closed. I could, I could shoot myself. <laughs> so anyway, the shot comes. I take the play out of the trigger. The bow goes off. And in my opinion, I nailed it. Just nailed it. A little high, right behind the shoulder, textbook. Sandy comes out and says, what happened? <laughs> I said, what? What happened? I said, wait, 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 what happened? He says, he told me not to make, make eye contact. I didn't say anything. <laughs> oh, God. So I explained to her in detail. Um, I didn't want to get out of the blind because I didn't want to screw up anybody else's hunting. Um, the uh, cell phone uh, text works. I text everybody that I've got a shot on the deer and Sandy and I are waiting in the blind and Sandy gets me out of the blind um, and I'm looking away from the blind and what was the movie guys about the baseball field? Feel um, the dreams. Feel the, the dreams. Match- Feel okay. the- Remember yeah. when all the cars were coming in the light yep. at the end of the show? Yep. Well, this is what it looked like. Every <laughs> single person in camp is coming with their lights on. It's now dark and they're coming to get our deer. And it is so exciting. And all the guys, the deer, of course, ran right to the thickest part of the woods. And we can't find a, a, any blood. 
and all of the guys are being macho with Sandy. You know, Sandy, you know, get back, please, and get back to the line here, and you know, let me do this, and guess who finds the first drop of blood? <laughs> Sandy. Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve guys looking at you know everybody. Sandy finds the first drop of blood, and once we found the first drop of blood, then we could start putting this thing together. The, the, it was a pretty high shot, so the deer didn't uh, bleed too much. It was a magnificent, beautiful UP eight pointer, gorgeous. And um, I, we tagged the deer. Uh, it was a t- kind of an embarrassing moment. I cried in front of everybody. I just was so full of happiness. And not at the deer, but just how much love and kindness there was in this group of people that I had never met. Uh, you know, it just was the pastor put his arm around. We all said a prayer where we put a piece of pine bough in the deer's mouth. It was, it was so respectful and just everything I wanted out of that hunt. And those guys wanted to clean it that night. And the temperature was really cold. I mean, it was chilly. It was in the 30s, 20s, you know, beginning of both seasons, mm-hmm. pretty chilly. And I would not let them clean that deer. I said, no way. It ain't happening. That deer is going to be on the meat pole, and it's going to be uh, on the end. We, we raised it up with a tractor. I think it was a green tractor, a blue tractor. We raised it up, and it stayed there for three or four days. And every morning, I'd go out with my coffee and look at my deer. So the last day, we butchered it up. Um, as we were taking pictures of everybody together, um, the game warden came by, and the game warden said that the uh, – the deer hunting wasn't very good that week, and that was one of the first deer that he had seen. But it was only, you know, one or two days into the season. And we spent time with him, and uh, the deer weighed 183 pounds, I believe, dressed. Nice. Not with the head off, but just got it. Yeah, right. So it was, you know, and it wasn't a monster deer, but it was, look, it was a nice, gorgeous deer. Very proud to have him. Brought the meat back. Um, Sandy uh, took a couple turns on the crossbow and just couldn't quite put it together. She didn't get a shot. But um, the UP has got a wildness about it. It has a feel about it. It, it has a, a, a cleanliness and an honesty about it. The lakes are so beautiful. Um, as some, it, it, I, 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 to this moment, I cannot explain to you all what the UP is. But it, it buried, you know, like a hot poker. You know, it's buried in my heart. I am not sure that I might not live there someday. I'm not sure that I might not live in Clio, Michigan someday. But um, I felt that so many of the values that I had. And, you know, I went to two or three different gas stations there. And I'm in a wheelchair and I'm with my dog, Pepper. We haven't talked about Pepper yet. This is my help dog, a lab, great hunting dog and a great, a well-trained dog. And every gas station, they say, how are you doing? And I got to tell the story of my buck. You know, my radar is pretty good, everybody. I'm a sharp cookie. I've been around the world plenty of times. Uh, I'm well-educated. I hope that doesn't sound like an egotist, but it's a fact. And I can tell the sincerity in people's eyes. And everywhere I went, I saw that sincerity. And I I think that's what makes the UP so wonderful. You cross that bridge, and it's just like fresh air. And uh, I don't know how many people listen to your show that are from, you know, that general area that know about the UP, but... Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of stories they can tell. Great place. So that was my hunt, and it was a great hunt. And another thing that was great is Sandy um, flew in, and Pepper and I drove up. So this was the first really long drive that I took by myself. So I took it by myself. I went to a hotel by myself. I transferred myself. I took care. I took a shower by myself. I, I fell out of bed in one of the hotels, and the fire department it put me back in my bed. I, I drove there. I fueled my own truck. I put all my hunting gear together. It took me three people to get me dressed because those big overalls are very hard. I look like a wounded walrus getting my pants on. <laughs> but but just, just everybody on the couch. It used to take me two hours and 50 minutes to get my pants on. Today, it takes 12 minutes I can get my pants on. I can't get a bib on. It takes about three people to get me in it. But just look at that. Two hours and 50 minutes. 12 minutes. Unbelievable. So that was a great hunt. Yeah. I, I got to ask, I mean, when, when you're driving up, when you crossed that bridge, was it daytime or was it nighttime when you crossed the Mackinac Bridge? It was um, It was about mid-afternoon. By the way, when we went from Clio to there, um, we went with a caravan, which was really fun, you know. That's All always guys fun. Went, but but uh, it was just, uh, I would say about uh, to, uh, Blaney Park, I think is three hours 
from the uh, bridge. Am I right? Two or three hours? It's it's, a, it's about it's about two hours. Two and a half. Yeah. Two hours. Great drive. Oh, uh, it, it, well, it, a couple of big lakes we passed. Yeah, but to answer your question, it was during daylight. Well, when you were going up the Beautiful. bridge. You're, you're making that approach, and you're going up, and when you get to mid-span and you can see the other side, you look to your left, you look to your right, and you can see Lake Michigan, Lake Huron. Right. What, what, were you, what, did, what were you thinking at that point? I mean, because it's a different experience for everybody, and I'm just curious as to what it, what it felt like for you when you are crossing that big expanse of water and you were driving. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking for a guy who spent most of my life, you know, 100 miles offshore, a guy who's traveled around the world, flies airplanes, that has been lucky and exposed to everywhere in the world, how beautiful it was. It was like going to a different country. And I, I said to myself, you idiot, Trent. I mean, what a gorgeous resource. I mean, let me just tell you something. People in Michigan who hunt in the UP who have never been anywhere else, if you're sitting on your couch and saying, God, I would love to be this guy, go here and here, don't do it. I mean, you've got one of the most beautiful places in the world. I vow to go back there every single year. This year may be a skip year, but I loved it. Yeah. I love it. By the word, another thing I was just taken back with is I see so much original um, timber, monster, monster trees. And, uh, boy, the lakes are beautiful. I, how is the fishing in the UP? <laughs> Walleye fishing up in, the, never... up in the up in the Bay de Knox up there, up off Escanaba, which is just, uh, if you would have went further west a little bit, it's phenomenal. Uh, walleye yeah. is great. <laughs> then you can go into Superior. You've got good... Uh, fishing up there and then what's even better is interior lakes are are very pristine and are barely used it sometimes i'll see more wisconsin plates at a lake than i will see michigan plates so yeah it it it, it depends on what you want to go after from pike musky to trout to you know it's phenomenal. Well, up there. there by Blaney Park, that's the Scenic Wildlife the, area, right? Scenic Wildlife, that's Two-Hearted where our, River. That's where our moose are. Yeah. So, but yeah. It, it's I mean, you know, guys, everybody on the couch, but you heard those interior lakes, and you just said to yourself on the couch, you know, I can't get to that lake. My wheelchair won't go there. I, I'm heavy. Nobody could get me there. I can never go there. Stop the sled. If you take a sled, and guys, I don't mean the Red Rider. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean a a a, a, a plastic sled that you use to carry deer out with. Yep. Skid it. Are you, with, are you all with me? Yep. Mm-hmm. They make them uh, They make them uh, carry decoys with. Yeah, like a jet you sled. You take the sled, you put down a foamy on the bottom so you don't get a pressure sore on your rear end, which is a problem with us paraplegics. You get a small pillow or something or your backpack to put by your head. You move your hands in. You do a creative toe line for two or three guys. You can go anywhere. Anywhere. And you, you, you tow that person right to the, one of those interior lakes. I don't care if you're going through the woods, if you're going through snow, if you're going through marsh, you can get there. And then they go back and get your wheelchair, and you're in. So I just wanted to put that comment in. Well, you know, I, I'm looking at – we've been showing some of the pictures off your Facebook page here where you're, you're out hunting or fishing or what have you. It, you know, you're in a field full of swan, uh, swan decoys. Uh, you're out next to a, a river or a lake, I can't tell which, um, doing some duck hunting. And every time I see you're, you're in just what I, it looks to me like a regular wheelchair. It's not like a big, heavy tracks chair. So, I mean, yeah. you're getting it I, done. I use, the, I use the track chair, but it's, it's a matter of, of mental thinking. Remember that common sense thing? Mm-hmm. What you hear when you're in a wheelchair is, oh, I can't do that. I've never done this. I'm not certified to do this. What if I hurt you? Oh, my God. It goes on and on and on. Well, I called myself 185 pounds of blue twist and steel. <laughs> I'm really weigh 210. I am nothing but a bag of potatoes. That's all I am. I'm a 200 pound bag of potatoes. You take four guys, two in the front, two in the back, pick my ass up and put me anywhere. Pick me up, put me on a trailer, drive me to a muddy field. Can't get through the field. What is that? Is that? Is that? Is that? Yes, I can go by trailer. I can go on an ATV. I can be carried. I can be pulled. I can be pushed. But if you had a 200-pound sack of potatoes and you had to get it from A to B to accomplish C, that's what you tell people. You figure out. You will figure out how to do it. Because I can't do it. Just pick my ass up and get me there. That's right. And speaking of getting there, how about we go to our last segment and find out about this trip that he's about to go on? Absolutely. I'll tell you what. If, uh, let's take a quick break. Is that okay, Tread? We'll take a break here for just a quick second. We'll step outside, take care of some business, and then when we come back, um, you are getting ready to take uh, 
what I call the adventure of a lifetime. And I'm, I'm very envious because that's where you're going is a place I would love to go someday with my dad or with, with Danny or anybody, really. But uh, So let's step outside. We come back. We're going to talk to Tread and figure out where he's going next. We'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back. We're back to the last segment of the show. And, uh, you know, before we went to break, we talked about this big, the adventure you took to Michigan, but, uh, you know, you're fixing to take what I, what I would call for me a trip of a lifetime, but you're really going to take this big trip by yourself. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw it to you and let you explain what you're ready to, uh, embark on. Well, everybody, I'm, I'm 67 years old. Um, life is good. But I still have a lot of pain. I had four or five operations on my right hand. I have an accelerator in my back uh, that puts an electric shock down my arm that helps with the pain. Um, I was taking 100 milligrams of methadone a day for the pain. I'm very proud to announce that I am down to 15 milligrams nice. of methadone a day. And um, to be honest with you, the doctors don't want me to get off it. They think that uh, it, it does that a small amount. I my life expectancy is zero. Being one of the oldest living people in the world with my affliction, I'm not happy in North Carolina, only because I broke up with Sandy. I don't have a girlfriend. Um, I'll get to my trip, and but, but let's just dispel one thing, everybody. Sure. I hear all the time. Fred, forget about the women. Don't try to have a relationship with a woman. It never works out. I just want to say right now that I'm going to have a woman that I'm in love with. It's all about attitude. The people that I date, the women I do things with, they don't see my wheelchair because I'm full of life. I'm full of love. I'm full of expectation. I'm impetuous. I love to do things outdoors. If you have the right attitude, women and men will come to you as friends or girlfriends or whatever. And I'm also telling you that this nonsense that a paraplegic cannot please a woman and stuff. It's just, just nonsense. And I say this respectfully. Um, I believe in the institution of marriage very much. I've been married to two of the most wonderful women in the world. Okay, I'm not proud to admit that they ended up in a divorce, but it was wonderful when it was great. So anyway, let's get over that. So I'm sitting here, 67, life expectancy. I have a magnificent black lab. Um, her name is Pepper. Um, she's a, a girl, wonderful gun dog, trained to be a wonderful help dog. I'm saying to myself, what are you going to do, Trent? Everybody listen to me now. You're stuck in life. You don't have anybody who's dependent on you. You're not married. My son, Hunter, and my daughter, Lauren, are both taking care of themselves now, doing great. I can sit here for the rest of my life and not be unhappy and be unhappy. I can sit here. I can be trapped. Everybody put your helmet on. I started a brigade looking for a trailer. I spoke to every single trailer com a company I believe that makes a, tra a trailer. I went to Elkhart, Indiana four times. And I found a trailer company called HL Industries, Inc. They go under the word um, uh, Harborview. And Harborview um, makes trailers for paraplegic people. I go up there. The owner's name is Peggy. Um, it's a privately owned company. Uh, I get in there on a Saturday. Um, I go to church with Peggy. Um, it's a great small company. And before you know it, I'm designing in a Treadbarda adventure trailer. And nobody can design a trailer better than me because if you get any higher of an affliction, it doesn't work. So if it works for me, it works for anybody. We design a, a, a 30 foot, 29 foot, 30 foot trailer, 33 at the ton, weighing about 7,800 pounds. I have a brawn lift that gets me in. I have the sink, the light switches, I have the TV, the bed, storage, shower, gun rack, fishing rod racks on the ceiling, um, 
the special table that opens up that I can get out of the trailer, a little bed for Pepper to sleep. I spend three days working with everybody. Um, the head guy there, his name is John, and uh, uh, his name is John Such, and it's spelled like T S U F C H something something. It's ridiculous. I mean, you could, <laughs> you would never figure out that it's Such, and he is a head sales guy. I have decided, after a lot of thought, that I'm going to drive from Beaufort, North Carolina, to Elkhart, Indiana, on the 22nd of this month. I'm going to pick up my trailer, and guess what, guys? I'm driving to Alaska myself. Alaska. I'm going to take I-90 across the top of the United States, which is one of the most beautiful drives you can take. I'm going to cut across into Alberta, British Columbia, the Northwest Territories, that whole area. I'm going to cross, and I'm going to come in at Toke, Alaska. It is 4,700 miles, I think. It's something like 100 hours. Um, I proved that I can drive 13 hours. But I have to rest for three days after it. <laughs> right? So, I, you know, you know I, I figure I can drive six to eight hours a day. And then now I have the problem of where to park the trailer and how to park the trailer. And there's got to be light for me to see when I do the trailer, all kind of things. But hey, everybody, Fred Barda, paralyzed from my chest down, is driving a GMC 1500 4x4 pickup with airbags and an electric brakes on the trailer. And I, with hand controls, and I'm going to drive to Alaska by myself with my dog. How cool is that? That is awesome. And <laughs> this company, HL Industries Inc. or Harborview, these guys are the nicest company that could be. And I'm really excited to do my model of the trailer. We're going to have all these tread bar to options, and I'm hoping that the people on Facebook will rally. So you know, we'll have Barda crew. Maybe we'll have two or three guys in Ohio if I get in trouble and each stay all the way there. That people are starting to offer and line up that if I do get in trouble, somebody can help me. Um, I had a big meeting with my doctors. I've done my will. I'm not going there to die, everybody. I'm not going there to take my life. <laughs> going there to I live. I realize going to be complicated. Going there to live. Going there to hurry up living or, or hurry up dying. And, you know, I have bowel problems. Sometimes I get constipated and I have gas build up in my 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 bladder and i get severe um, stomach aches and and excruciating pain and then i go septic and i have utis and i don't want to go through all this medical stuff but i'm just going to let everybody know i'm fragile mm -hmm. got a big voice and a lot of bravado but I'm, I'm fragile and and sometimes i have to sleep the whole day so i don't know how i'm going to do it but figure it out on the, the way lord, the lord told me to follow my heart and i am and I hope to find a woman that I love. I hope to find a place to live that I love. Right now, there are many places that I love and many people that are good friends. But, uh, you know, the, I'm not doing this trip to prove something. But God Almighty, if you're a person who's afflicted, if you're depressed, if you have problems, what is the problem called when the people come back uh, and are depressed? Uh, P called something. PTSD. Yeah, and that's a real deal. If you have PTSD, guys. If I can do it, you can do it. I've got the action track chair in the back of my truck. I have an attendant control that I can actually load that thing, the action track chair, using two rails in my truck, close the tailgate, hip hook up the electric tongue. I've got automatic leveling. I can do this. Now, I have been practicing changing a tire on my truck. And I have the tire in the back of the truck with a big rope on it. I pull it out. I have a very lightweight jack, and I can change the tire on my truck in two hours and 15 minutes. Now, I know that sounds so long to everybody, but, but think about it. How do I get the tire from the ground up? Mm -hmm. How do I do that? I use levers and two-by-fours, and I inch it up, and then I use, I use another little uh, tongue jack to get it up and get it on. It falls off about 15 times, but two hours, I can get it done. Isn't that something? A paraplegic change in a big truck tire. It's outrageous. And this trip is going to give me the confidence to be able to tell other people and show other people. By the way, HL Industries, Harborview, you think they could get a better test than this? I don't think so. <laughs> right. You know, there's only a couple, by the way, for those afflicted, there's only three or four trailer companies who really give a damn about those who are afflicted. And HL Industries is one of them. And this line called Harborview, they had enough guts to 
to only make this line for those in need. It's a big deal. They care and they they help. And it's a great Christian uh, company. And uh, they, we talk about blow your horn. Yeah, I will. They really made it great. So they're going to have a great cast. I'm going to see moose and caribou. I'm going to see badger. Uh, I'm bringing a shotgun, a rifle. You're not allowed to bring handguns into Canada, so I'm sending my Glock 45 that I held in my hand in the barn in the first segment. I'm I'm, I'm sending that from Great Three Bears Gun Shop somewhere in Montana to their shop in um, TOT, Alaska. That's legal, so I'm going to have a my pistol in the great state of Alaska, which is a carry state and uh, recognizes a carry permit. So, you know, when I look at all these things, what an adventure I'm on. My entire life, I've been on a schedule. My entire life, I've had to be here, be there, help this person, help that person, do this, do that. For the first time in my life, I am going somewhere. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going to come back. I don't know where home is. I don't know how long I'm going to stay, and I don't know what I'm going to do. And you know what? I can't wait. And I will read my Bible every morning, and hopefully the sponsor of your show will reach out and give me some coffee for my trip, and I'll be drinking Hunter's coffee, and I just can't wait to go. And uh, you, you, you know what? The audience, if you're anywhere between Elkhart, Indiana, and Montana, or in Alaska, please get on my face page. Please offer yourself up as a bar to scout in case I have an emergency. If you have a place I can put the trailer, you know, without going to a trailer park, I would love to meet you. Love to sign stuff for your kids, and um, that's the way it is. You know what? Uh, I'm really excited. There's a there's a a picture we have of you, actually a couple, that has a motto that that you kind of say with all this, and it's kind of through all four segments now. You've kind of it, it rings true. Uh, you say never give up, never say never. Yeah, I don't say that. You're wrong. I say never, never give up, and never, never say never. That's the quote. And be the most that you can be with what God gave you. And never miss the opportunity to help someone else. And that's where we are. Now, oh, by the way, I just finished my second book called Driven by Tread Barta. You can buy it on Amazon or you can buy it um, at bartaway.com. And this book is a story of my life, including my cancer. And um, I would love everybody to buy it. I would love everybody to see it. I'm very proud of it. Um, and uh, I, I, uh, I I hope that you can put that on there. So you know, oh, if you absolutely. go to bartoway dot com, absolutely, Amazon, we'll but... we'll put a link up on our website uh, in a couple of days or so, and we'll get everybody to get that link up there, yeah. and we'll point them to it. I'd like for to you. say one more thing: I am scared. I am nervous. I can think of every situation that I can get in trouble. On my trailer is the entire Psalms twenty three. It's on my trailer. In the back, it says paraplegic. Patience, please. If you wear the armor of God, you can do anything. And when one door closes, another one opens. And you know what, guys? That's my message to you tonight. Fitting for being Easter. Absolutely. You know, um, yeah. I, yeah, I, right. I, the cruc- crucifixion of Jesus. There's a there, there, there's a lot of people out there that could use this message and and I'm not I'm not asking this to promote our show I'm asking you to do this for somebody else you know if you've heard this and you know somebody that needs to hear this message make sure you share the link to that those people that need it and need to hear um cause you, like Tred just said you know when one door closes another opens you you don't know what that is behind that door that uh, that that person could be, be receiving you know it, it could change their life. So, um, yeah. and another point is, uh, I'd like everybody to know that I'm close to getting another TV show, but I want everybody to know that as of this moment, I have given North Country Journal the exclusive to report on my journey all the way up to Alaska. You know, and and we uh, appreciate it. I'm very proud to do it. It's gonna be cool, man. Uh, Nobody well, else has. We're going to share it and and back and forth between you and us and everybody else and all the Up North Journal uh, listeners and viewers out there. You know, uh, Facebook, Tread Bardic, just, just search Tread Bardic, go to his personal page. Uh, you know, Tread, I, I, before we even start this interview tonight, when we start talking about this trip, you know, I, I kind of equate this to you being like Lewis and Clark, taking and carving that way westward and taking, taking an adventure that's just life-changing. And for you to... 
I, I hope truly that uh, whatever you, you see along the way or whatever you experience is, is something that you can just behold and and cherish for the rest of your life, man. Because I tell you what, um, we're cheering for you. I mean, we we really are excited that you're able to be able to do this, number one, but you're sharing it with so many people that uh, that need to hear this message. Yeah, thank you very much. By the way, if there's anybody from Elkhart, Indiana to Montana who could possibly take me on a late turkey hunt and uh, have me go with you, I'd love to do it on the way. Amen, uh, brother. Right? There we go. Now, that's it's what we're perfect. talking about. It's uh, perfect for me. You know, All I, you got to do is get me there. I, uh, I, I know a few people out that way. Um, I'm going to call one out in Iowa. You know who you are. It's, a, it's along that way. I got a couple buddies in Illinois that are yep. along that route. You know, um, and I know there's others out there that are that are we all over the United States. Got one out in Washington. Too. Got one out in Washington. Yep. And uh, there's a couple guys that I used to talk to a while back that still listen to the show occasionally. If you're hearing it out in Idaho, I mean, there's a lot of guys out there between between Alaska and Elkhart, Indiana, that could uh, could lend a hand. So step up, step up. You know, yeah, that that'd be great. You know, a lot of a lot of people. If you, anybody who's not too far far off I-90, I ninety, I I think that's the route I'm going to take. Uh, which goes right across the top of the United States. Yeah, there you go. I think I'm going to take I-90. Oh, by the way, I un- un- unashamedly say, I, I think uh, this will make people laugh. If there's a woman out there who is a good Christian woman who loves to hunt and fish and is exciting and is sees so happy to see the Lord in her life every day, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The, sh- the shameless dating app and I, I, plug. I, I say that sincerely. That, yep. That's what's missing in my life is someone to share this trip with. And uh, I'm so thankful I can share it with you. And I value the people on my Facebook so much. But I wish I had the right woman next to me on this trip. Well, and I don't. Well, like you and, said, uh, it's too bad. you got 40 some hundred 4, miles. 4,500 miles. To find one, forty well, seven hundred. Forty seven hundred. There you go. In a hundred hours of driving. Yeah, and you know, and, and try this whole thing, this whole outdoor experience. I mean, that we all share, we all enjoy, we all you know crave so much. I think, like, like you said throughout this whole message tonight, is the fact that the reason we love it and crave it is because we do want to share it with other people, our family, our friends, even strangers. I mean, you stop, like you said, you stop at a gas station. How many times, if, Danny, have you been at a gas station? You see a guy pull up and he's got a buck in the back, or even a doe. He's like, "Tell me the story." Yep, exactly. tell me the story. That's what we love to hear. Is, is we love to share stories. So, yeah. Yeah. and and my and I want to say this on this trip, I'm going to try to correct. The many flaws that I've had in my life. I'm often impatient. I'm often rude. I often have bad humor. I often lose my patience. I often don't act properly. I often don't listen. I'll go over to somebody with a dough in the back. I know it's the right thing to do. I'll go over there and listen, but I'm not really not listening. This is Tred Barda bearing his soul. I hope on this trip I have the opportunity on this Easter, where Jesus gave his life so that we may be forgiven for our sins, I want to take this trip and try to mend the deficiencies I've had throughout my entire life. And, I, you know, it's not a big moment. It just is what it is. Amen. And I, and I say to all of you, with the Easter, Easter coming, um, when that guy tells you about his dough, clear your mind. Smell the smell of a bog. Listen to his story. Enjoy it. Look into the man's eyes. Because this is what it's all about, guys. That's what it's all about. And, you know, when we were going to do this interview, um, I said to Sandy, who I speak to every other day, I, I said, Sandy, she said, are you going to do this? And I said, uh, I said, if they do it on Sunday, I'm not going to do it. And lo and behold, one door closes, another one opens. And here you guys aren't doing it on Sunday, as you shouldn't. Mm-hmm. I really respect that. And I know Thanks. your listeners do, too. Thanks. Thanks. We Thank appreciate you. it. No, it's uh, like we said at the beginning of the show. That's that's time we reserve for the families uh, on these special holidays like this. And yeah, I I just I can't thank you enough for uh, for taking time out of your day tonight and sharing the story with us. Um, being an, being an inspiration. Yeah, man, it's just you know I always remember you always talk about uh, the hard way, the bar way. And uh, my friend, uh, you've been dealt a hand of cards. It's the hard way, but you're doing it the bar way. If I may use your yeah. your analogy, your, your your saying there, you know, as long as, as long as you say it right, never ever ever give up, never ever ever say never. Exclamation part. You know, it, that's what life is, and you know, I like to close with 
there's nothing more important than each other. Amen. That, that, it's just simply that it, 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 there is so much joy in helping somebody else. So if you walk across a gas station and there's a wrapper on the floor, pick the damn thing up. It doesn't make any difference if there's wrappers all over the place. It makes them no different if it's never going to change. Pick it up. Be an example to you and other people. We'll live in a better world. And uh, you know what? I want to go to bed. I'm tired. Hey, <laughs> hey Tred. We're going to end the show yep. here on the podcast. Could you take us out on this Easter Sunday with a prayer to close the show, please? Yeah. You ready? Everybody, I would like to say a prayer for Easter Sunday. Um, I'm on my way to church, and we'll be in a place that is wonderful. And if we could, uh, men could remove their cover and bow our heads, let us pray. Dear Lord, for what we're about to see, and the Lord make us truly thankful. Thank you so much for nature, for lakes and rivers and the oceans. Thank you so much for making the game that we have to hunt and grace our tables. Thank you so much to instill in our hearts the ability to help other people and to love other people. Lord, thank you for the strength to defend our great country. Please wrap your arms around all of the people in service all over the world. Please bless the North Country Journal. They are doing the right thing. Their hearts are in the right place. We are Christians that we all can be proud of. And let us never forget to never miss the opportunity to help someone else and to accept that Jesus and the Lord and Christianity and grace gives us the ability to be the most that we can ever be. Amen. Amen, and that does it for us this week on the Up North Journal. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Scentlock Technologies, Scent Blocker, Rambo Bikes, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Limb Walker Game Calls, Stanislavski Releases, Copper John Sights, Easy Cut Outdoor Products, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Hunting Sense, X Stand Tree Stands, Spot Shooters, Gut Check Indicators, and Packer Max Cult Packers. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal. <laughs>